question, I'll just talk you through it. So we're given two graphs here that is all about D, which is the braking distance, and V, which is the speed of a car. And part A of this question asks us to explain why figure six would lead to the engineer believing that the braking distance is going to be modelled by this equation, where K is of roughly 0 0.017. So this is a straight line, which makes me think y equals mx plus c. Except that we don't have y, we've got log base 10 of d. We don't have x, we've got log base 10 of v. And our y-intercept is minus 1.2. 7, 7. So this is my starting point from that graph. Now I'm going to remove that logarithm because I want to have d as the subject. The way I'm going to remove that logarithm is I'm going to do 10 to the power on both sides. That way I've got 10 to the power of log base 10 which cancels out to just leave me with the d. On the right hand side, I've got 10 to the power of m log base 10 of v minus 1.77. It's important to note that all of this is in the power. But I can split that power up using index laws. I've split it up by multiplying the bases. So I know that this is the same thing as this, because if I multiply the bases, I add the powers together, and that gives me this. Then, I've used the laws of logarithms to take this m and move it to be a power on the v. Which then allows the 10 to the power of log base 10 to cancel out, and I just get left with the v to the power m. The 10 to the power of minus 1.77 on my calculator is 0 0.017, rounded to two significant figures. And then all I've done is I've taken my answer and I've written it in the form that they want. So I've just swapped these two terms around. And instead of writing the M for the gradient, I've written N because that's what the question wanted. And that's part A done. Part B then says to use the information in figure five to find a full equation for the model. So I've taken what I've just got from part A and I'm using the fact that I now know that when V is 30, D is 20. So I've plugged V as 30 and D as 20. I've then divided the 20 by the 0 0.017, which gives this 1176.47. I've then taken logarithms of both sides. So taking logs here and here gets me to this line. Then I can use the power law to take this n and move it down to the front. And then I've divided both sides by the log 30 to work out what n is. And on my calculator, I've worked out that n is 2.08 to three significant figures. So we've now got our full equation of the model, which is d is equal to 0 0.017 times v to the power of 2.08. Right, moving on to part C. We're told that Sean is driving his car at 60 kilometers per hour in wet conditions, and he notices a large puzzle in the road 100 meters ahead. It takes him 0 0.8 seconds to react before applying the brakes. Can he stop in time? So, first thing to note is it takes him 0 0.8 seconds to react before applying the brakes. So, here I've worked out how far he's going to travel in those 0 0.8 seconds. In those 0 0.8 seconds, he's traveling at 60 kilometers per hour, which I have turned into meters per second here. 
I've taken the 60 kilometers and turned it into 60,000 meters. So he travels 60,000 meters in one hour. If I divide it by 60, that tells me how many minutes, uh, sorry, how many meters he will travel in one minute. And then if I divide by 60 again, it tells me how many meters he will travel in one second. So Sean is traveling at 50 over three meters per second. That is his speed in meters per second. And he's traveling at that speed for 0.8 seconds. So I'm going to do the speed times the time to work out the distance that he travels in those 0.8 seconds. So he travels 13.3 meters before he applies the brakes. Then he actually applies the brakes and we know from our model equation that if he's traveling at 60 uh, kilometers per hour, then plugging that into our model, we work out that he will take 84.9 meters to stop. Therefore, the total distance that Sean travels is the 13.3 meters before he applies the brakes plus the 84.9 meters whilst he's applying the brakes. So a total of 98.2 meters, which is less than 100. So yes, Sean just stops in time just before reaching the puddle.